it's an alpine ecosystem up here. Also lots of eucalypt forest and, and rocky areas. There's lots of good wildlife habitat up here. David Hamilton has been traipsing across Tasmania's central highlands for two days. He's looking for wallaby tracks and animal trails, the best spots to put cameras. Looks like a good spot to me. Over months, these cameras will capture hundreds of thousands of images of wildlife. So we can get occupancy numbers, so see how much of different areas that these animals are covering, and we can get activity levels from them too. So we can get density estimates from cameras like this, but it relies on us being able to individually identify animals on those cameras. So we can do that for things like devils and um, eastern quolls that have different coat patterns. David Hamilton's cameras will capture images of Tasmanian devils, but like most of Tasmania, there aren't as many as there used to be, and that's having impacts across the wider ecosystem. So we find that where devils are in the landscape in good numbers, they can dampen the effect of the feral cats and some of these smaller marsupials a little bit. So where devils go down in number, obviously that's a bit reduced and then that can have knock-on effects down through the whole ecosystem. In 1996, Tasmanian devil populations were at their peak at about 53,000. That number has fallen to an estimated 17,000 devils and is predicted to decline further to about 12,000 devils. The reason for the decline is devil facial tumour disease, or DFTD. It's caused by two aggressive cancers, which are transmitted by devils biting each other. Most devils will die within 6 to 12 months of the tumour first appearing, and death is a consequence either of starvation, depending on the location of the tumour. Um, as its name suggests, most cancers will occur either on the face or inside the mouth. But because it's a malignant tumour, the other cause of death is malignancy and subsequent organ failure. There has been progress with vaccine and immunotherapy trials in recent years as researchers try to save the iconic marsupial. In 2016, 33 healthy vaccinated devils were released into the wild in northeast Tasmania to interact with a diseased population. All of the devils developed an immune response against DFTD in response to the vaccine. But over the next couple of years, we monitored those release sites and it became apparent that that immune response was not protective against a natural DFTD challenge. So that's why we went back to the drawing board. Now immunologist Andy Fleece is part of a team developing an oral bait vaccine for the most widespread of the two cancers that cause devil facial tumour disease. So these are devil facial tumour cells. The team has been working on a vaccine that takes a common virus but replaces some of the viral DNA with DNA from the devil facial tumour cells. When delivered, the modified virus can then produce proteins that can make the devil facial tumour cells more visible to the devil's immune system. So one month or six months down the road, if the tumour shows up, the immune system will come investigate that tumour and, and say, look, we've seen this before, something bad happened when it was here, so let's try to clear those cells out before it gets worse. It's a similar approach to some COVID-19 vaccines. I think the simplest way to describe it is our virus is basically the same as the AstraZeneca virus. The concept is very similar. You have a virus that can't copy itself and that makes targets for the immune system to go after. Oh, yeah. Researchers are hoping to test the vaccine in healthy captive devils this year, first to make sure it's safe and then to see if it protects them from the tumour. We're excited to be at the point now where we're ready to test it in devils and start answering that question. The team won't know if the vaccine works until it's trialled in live devils, but they're not wasting any time developing a way to distribute it to wild devils if and when the time comes. So we don't get to the point like, hey, we made a really good vaccine, but now it's going to be five more years before we can actually take it to the field because we haven't made the bait yet. Preliminary field trials with a placebo bait dispenser started in 2021. And certainly the devils will take the placebo baits that we trialled, um, but so too will a number of off-target species, so particularly possums and paddy melons and wallabies. The latest tests have been with an automatic bait dispenser. And this dispenser was effective at keeping the paddy melons out. Only one possum figured out how to use it. And we went from about 7% of devils eating the baits to over 55% of the baits going to devils. So this is a pretty big advance. And, but we're, we're pretty hopeful about what we can do. And with the number of people helping us and the number of technology advancements, um, we, we're pretty hopeful we can get there down the road. The devil is an iconic species. And it holds a special place in the heart of not only Tasmanians, but people throughout Australia and the world. Um, 
but potentially more importantly is the role that the devils play in the Tasmanian environment. So yeah, DFTD is not only threatening the devil, it's threatening the whole of Tasmania's ecosystem.